so the goal of this while we're in the live stream, I want I want you guys to tell me why this is something that I would potentially trade. Right. Going over everything that we've talked about for a bit. Why would this be something I would trade? Right. The very first thing, it's uptrending. Right. So we, we know it's uptrending. I talked about that earlier. Uh, uptrending is what I'm always looking for. We know this thing has been a good uptrend. Right. What is this pattern that we're watching here? What is this? What is this happening to perfection? Basically, gold star, if anyone can tell me this pattern and then I'll, I'll go over how I set my stops and, set, and everything. Third time I see a cup. That's right. Marcel uh, cup and handle Eugene cup and handle. Uh, with a small handle, little, yeah, little handle. Yeah, so perfect. Cup and handle. Very easy, uh, you know, thing to watch and to understand. Basically, you have a resistance, then you have a big uh, cup. Some will be shallow, some will be super deep and wide. Then you have a double top. So that double top is up here around 38.76, followed by a pullback. Now, the perfect entry, this is where people play things differently than me. Uh, you see where pivot, where it says pivot point. Does anyone know what a pivot point is? is if you're in my uh premium group in the discord you'll know uh but does anyone know what a pivot point is and i'll talk about how i set that pivot point up and uh how i determine my stop losses and take profits i actually don't think i have a take profit on here yeah, my take profit would probably end up being around like 40. Charge and direction. Yeah, so, all right, so a pivot is basically a price point or area that would confirm a breakout. So you see this cup and handle. If this were to break up above 39 and hold within my pivot zone, that is going to mean basically, not for sure, but we are confirming a breakout. Um, if there are times where we break through it and then drop back below, so like right here, JKS, this thing's looking like we're going to break out. It's holding up in the pivot zone. ATKR, this is a perfect example here, right? We went up into the pivot zone. Look at this the first time. I don't want to get sidetracked, but look at this, right? So the first time we broke out, we were in the pivot zone for three days. Looked like we were going to break out and then we rejected, right? The reason for that is there wasn't a lot of volume. Today and the past couple of days, we've broken through the pivot zone and this thing has absolutely mooned. Um, so that is something to understand, but looking at EQ and R, the pivot is basically the point in which it has to hit to buy uh, agave Bob. Exactly. The, now here's where it differs with me. Technically the pivot zone would be where it, it needs to go for you to buy it, but I don't. So technically a breakout on a cup and handle is when you buy, you buy the breakout. What I do is I normally buy on supports. So what I'll do is sometimes I'll buy the start of a breakout, but normally like with this position, I would have been buying down at 3628 and setting my stop loss within this range. You'll notice with my stop losses, guys, I don't have a hard stop. I don't have one single price that I'm getting out no matter what. It's always a range, right? Because I know how big money trades and I know that they purposely flush people out of the market and then buy it back up. A very good example is MAT, right? MAT broke right through support, pulled back up. And if you would have sold, you would have missed out pretty big. Another one is KMB, right? Drove right through support, sat in my stop loss zone for two days and then drove back up. I'm still in this position. Who knows what will happen, but that's why I use a range. So for EQNR, we have this cup and handle. I personally would have been buying down at 3621 or you can average in. So maybe one position at 38.88, another position at 36.14, and then average down and then set that stop at 35.34. So the pivot point is basically where it has to hit in order for us to buy in, but I tend to buy in a little bit earlier, but I scale into my positions. I don't know about you guys, but for me, I scale into everything. So I take like the max amount I want to own. So let's say like I want to own $10,000 worth of EQNR. I will buy 3,000 the first time, 3,000 the second time, 3,000 the third time, and get myself a nice little average. I don't believe in throwing your whole position in unless it's like a day trade. For me, I, I just feel like it's mentally easier, and then you end up getting a better price anyway. So we have this cup and handle. Best entry would have been down at 36.12. What we want to see is a push up, good volume around 39.11, pushing through with that volume, and then from there, 
pretty easily we should see a hold over the pivot and i think we'll see a push up to like 42 potentially 44 bucks so i think eqnr is a phenomenal price um i'm actually might buy some <laughs> i might actually just buy some after this yeah eqnr looks very very good uh and what was the other one i'm sorry i forget who this was someone asked about eqnr and something else i i lost i lost it i'm sorry whoever that was i'm, I'm looking at the uh the chat wheel but yeah so eqnr uh looks very very good and i uh, will see where things end up going for the rest of the week okay here we go peter eqnr stock you would consider owning uh not just trading eugene i don't know enough about the ticker like i don't know enough about the company uh in order to to say that but uh it is something i would trade right now um talk about a couple we call uh tesla in your ticker list so it's up can you put it in my ticker list i could put tesla in there hopefully it would uptrend but Tesla was a good example of like an uptrend as well, um, you know, for a very long time. Roblox, that was the other one, Michael. Yeah, let's take a look at Roblox. Sorry about that. Um, so looking at Roblox, uh, the exact opposite, not uptrending. Um, descending wedge, TTM squeeze, looking just like Shopify. I bet that Roblox is going to pop back up to probably 45, 46 in the next couple of weeks. I like Roblox. Same situation as Spotify. I'd be looking to enter at 31, take profits at 51, stop loss around like 1935. That's what I would be looking for. Um, make sure you hit the like button, guys, and uh, check out the Discord community down below. Uh, do you expect a bounce in SPY today, or you keep it, uh, or do you think it? Do you think that we're going to continue to see a drop down? Uh, how do you get a price, a target price on EQNR cup and handle? That's a very good one, Marcel. Uh, I, I kind of don't. I'm just really kind of throwing shit at the wall with this. Uh, we can talk about another one, but let's zoom out, right? So finding a price target on EQNR, we're at all time highs. So like having a price target is not really, I want to say tangible, but we'll go over one that would be a good example. But the reason that I would say that is because judging on how we are trading, we would probably see a move up to 42. That would be a higher high. And for me, I would assume with my years of trading from 41 to 42, the RSI would be red as hell up around 75 and 80. That's where I would take profits. But when you're getting into that, like all time highs, it's a lot harder to make a tangible, you know, take profit. Like let's try to find is ATKR going to be a good example. No, we're like moving up into all time highs too no cbt no same thing let me try to find a better example okay um this might be good nope no try to find something that's not moving out into all-time highs lly shouldn't be near all time fuck no it really is damn it yeah so if there was like an old resistance then that's that would be that would be like our price target if we were to see that okay bkr is a good example we go through the I love trend spider, but the only thing I hate is like it's a bitch to make all your lines show up on everything. So looking at this here, looking at BKR, we have a big resistance where we are at 3776 on this daily chart. If we were to break out through this, my price target would be right up here around 41 and 45 because that was this resistance all the way back here in 2017. So these old resistance lines are going to act as a price target. Uh, but when you're looking at something like that, it's really all up to yourself if uh, if there's no like old higher high.